<laughs> I feel like every podcast here on Stop Crying Poser is always going to start out the exact same because, believe it or not, I don't listen to that intro as often as you would think. And every time I hear it, again, it makes me chuckle a little bit. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Let's begin by shouting out everyone in the chat, or at least everyone who I can currently see on the screen. Tuesday 23, Irie Caveman, Justice for All, Justin Lynn, Austin AR, Skater Anar, T. Wilson, The Rad Hatter, Mr. Brody, Mulchy YT, Radio Jam, Daniel G. I appreciate you guys for hanging out for this live recording of Stop Crying Poser, episode number six, I believe, if memory serves me correctly. If you haven't seen the first five episodes, I strongly recommend you find them on YouTube for a while. We were putting these episodes on SoundCloud, but I don't know what happened. SoundCloud just one day said, hey, dude, you put up too much uh, length of audio on this service, and now they wanted to charge me money, and I don't feel like paying. You know what? Like right here in Las Vegas. I don't go to the Strip because as a local Las Vegas resident, I don't feel like I should pay to park. And on SoundCloud, I feel like they're trying to make me pay to park. That's not what I'm going to do, SoundCloud. So, Mr. Cloud, if you're listening, get your shit together, man. Other than that, uh, I have some pretty cool topics for you guys. We're going to talk a little bit about police. We're going to talk about me winning some money. I have a trivia question for you guys. So you'll have the opportunity to win a free Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack shipped directly to your door. All you got to do is be smart on some random piece of information. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about tattoos and then who knows what will happen. Hopefully my dog doesn't go crazy because last week my brand new puppy, Koopa, who is now seven weeks. I feel like he's seven weeks and like one day old. So... If I leave him alone for, I don't know, two hours, he just goes fucking ballistic. And I don't know if you guys can see this. I have a little mark on my face. My dog tried to attack my face because he is a stupid animal. And that's not my fault, all right? I don't know whose fault that is. If you believe in God, it's God's fault for making my dog retarded. Thanks, God. Uh... How's everybody doing in the chat? By the way, uh, we record this live on Fridays right around 4 p.m. Pacific Time on Twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle. So if you are currently watching and or listening to this on another device or on YouTube, make sure to try to tune in, man. It's Friday. It's the end of the week. Let's kick this week off with, uh, with a bang, right? That's the best way to start anything with a bang. When I wake up and I'm next to a chick, only thing I want to do is bang. So guess what? Same thing with the weekend. Friday's here. I want to get it going with a bang. And basically, we're going to be banging each other via audio podcast. Okay? And that might make me a little bit gay. It might make you a little bit gay. But like I always say, it's better to be gay these days in America. They make more money. And uh, the bars are cool. And you can dress weird. And no one cares. So that's, uh, that's my message to America. Better to be gay. <laughs> um, first topic of the day, let's move over here to the Las Vegas local news. And I have some pretty cool news about me last night. There was a shooting that happened directly next to where I parked. But first, let's talk about armed suspects on the run after robbing armored truck in West Las Vegas. Las Vegas? You're lost. They're lost. Because they're still on the run. They're lost. They're not in Las Vegas. Las Vegas Metro Police are actively searching for two armed suspects who robbed an armored truck in West Las Vegas Friday morning. Ooh, scary. Officers responded to the robbery at the 6,000 block of Tropicana Avenue near Jones. Choppin' Jones. Not a super bad neighborhood. Not too far from me. Probably about three miles away. Police said the suspects were armed with a firearm. Okay. Why do we say that, armed with a firearm? I know you can be armed with a knife, but is it really necessary to say they were armed with a firearm? Am I just reading too much into this? I don't know. 
They left the area after robbing a Loomis armored truck employee. Loomis drives these big armored trucks and they supply like grocery stores with money and shit like that. And banks too, I think. A Fox 5 viewer shared a photo that shows the armored truck and Metro Police presence in the parking lot of a McDonald's restaurant near the aforementioned intersection. Hey, here's what happened. Do you guys remember Boondock Saints when uh, Willem Dafoe puts on the headphones and he figures out what happened just by listening? He just listens and then figures out what happened. We're going to do that right now, guys. Let me know what you think via the chat. How did this go down? Because here's me. Close your eyes. Picture this. You work for Loomis. Your name is Lewis, which is funny because your coworker Rob, always says, Oh, Lewis from Loomis. Ha, ha, ha. And then Lewis says, Shut the fuck up, Rob. But fucking do your job. Make sure no one's robbing us. So anyways, Lewis and fucking Rob... You know what? They're on their second... What time was this? What time did this happen? It doesn't say. Anyways, uh, they were on their third drop of the day, and uh, Rob says, you know what, Lewis? Loomis from Lewis? <laughs> Loomis Lewis? I'm kind of hungry, dude. <laughs> I feel like uh, uh, hot and spicy. And then Rob says, you know what, dude? They don't call them hot and spicy anymore, you fucking retard. They call them... Uh, Mixed chicken, spicy McChicken sandwich. And then they have an argument. Rob, dude, you don't know shit about spicy McChickens. No, it's not called a spicy. It's called a fucking whatever. And then they argue a little bit and they just say, you know what? Whatever, dude. And then uh, Rob pats Lewis on the belly and says, let's get in there, big guy. So then they pull up to the McDonald's. Little did they know that there was a man who was armed with not only two arms, but within one of his arms was a firearm. And the other arm was actually on fire because he had a spicy McChicken. And they are spicy. So he was a two-armed man with one firearm and one arm on fire. He then took the liberty to rob both Lewis and Rob. It was a firefight! <laughs> and uh, then police came. No one got hurt, thankfully. Everyone's all good. I'm getting a phone call. Here comes airplane mode. And, uh, I mean, that's all that really happened. Nobody got shot. Nobody got hurt. It was all good. But you know what? The real victim here is Rob. Because guess what? When you're in the middle of some type of shooting situation and all you want is a spicy McChicken and you're fucking, you're all stressed out, your adrenaline's going crazy, and now you have to sit there and talk to police for a while. So guess what? You're just getting hungrier and hungrier and hungrier. And now they've taped off the entire intersection. So now guess what? No one can get a spicy McChicken. Not Lewis nor Rob. So think outside the box, people. There's a bigger picture here. And I don't like the way things are going. I don't want to live in a world where spicy McChickens just get taken away just because of one bad seed with a firearm. Okay? Guns don't make McChicken's unaccessible, okay? People do. Because every time there's a gun near a McChicken, the McChicken's still edible. That gun only becomes usable when a person grabs it and then fucks up McChickens for everybody. So keep that in mind next time you see a debate on the internet or a debate in uh, the White House. It's not people that are just out here regulating spicy McChickens. Or it is. It is people, but it's not the guns. <laughs> um, did anyone come up with a? Uh, did anyone come up with a cool theory? Nope. No one. Nah. Real active chat here with you guys. Let's go on to the next, also gun-related topic. Nevada students joining Friday walkouts marking Columbine. Today is Friday, so that's 4:20. Oh shit! Blaze it, dude! Holy shit! Students at more than a dozen Nevada schools plan to participate Friday in a national walkout protesting gun violence marking the 19th anniversary of the Columbine High School shooting in Colorado. Um, uh, I don't want to get too political here, but what are you protesting? Gun violence? Like, that's a really strong fucking protest? Like, there's a lot of people in America who just love gun violence? You're not protesting anything. You're doing something that everyone agrees with. Gun violence is bad. Are you protesting gun control? Are you trying to get uh, more strict laws? Like, what's happening here? Okay. 
I don't really get it. I just don't understand it. <laughs> I really don't. Um, also, I remember there was a time long ago when walkouts and protests, they were like, uh, you're like protesting something where you're in the minority, right? Like uh, civil rights. Didn't Rosa Parks uh, do some shit like, I want to sit at the front of the bus? But I hope I'm not fucking up history right now. I pray to God I said the right name. And then uh, they were like, no, you have to sit at the back of the bus. And she was like, no, I'm going to protest this. And then it went really bad. She went to jail and shit. Nowadays, protests are just like, hey, let's, uh, let's take the day off of school on 420. I feel like I want to do that. You know what I want to do? Not go to school on 420. You know what? In fact, people have been protesting Columbine before it ever happened. That's been a thing for fucking years, is people cutting school on 420, right? Hasn't that been going on forever? So now suddenly we have a great excuse I don't know. Let's read a little bit more. Maybe I'm missing something. At least eight schools in the Reno Sparks area have registered for events for the national school walkout. So you have to you, you have to register to protest. Protest is supposed to be risky, right? You know what I want to protest? Murder. I'm not going to school because I want murders to stop. All murders, gun murders, knife murders, abortions, car murders, murders in Syria. Murders uh, in other continents. Just don't want to go to school. I'm not going to school, and that's me standing up for my right to protest. What's happening here? Am I the only one who feels this way, or am I just uneducated? Maybe I'm a little bit ignorant on the whole thing. And Snellgrove. Oh, not, not Miss Snellgrove. A senior at Reno's Wooster High helped lead hundreds on a walkout at her school on March 14th. You know what? These people have been protesting their entire lives. They're fucking Second Amendment. They've been protesting that forever because most of these people refuse to get educated on the laws in their state. So they've, this is not their first protest. They've lived their entire life protesting. And now, now they can fucking come out and protest violence. They've, they've been protesting the Constitution for a long time, but now they want to protest violence. She says many of them plan a return trip to a local post office several blocks away at 10 a.m., to deliver letters to Nevada Republicans, Senator Dean Heller and Representative... I'm so stupid. Mark Amodii urging action to combat gun violence. You want to know why I don't vote? Because I don't even know what, how to pronounce this guy's name. I don't vote because I'm stupid. Okay, but that's my personal choice. You know what? I'm protesting voting because I know that I'm dumb. Enough said. I feel like some of these guys, they don't know anything about guns, but they're still going to protest. So for me, I say to myself, hey, you don't know shit about politics. You don't know shit about what's going on in the world. How about you just do everyone else a favor and not vote? But when it comes to these people with all their fucking their gun ideas, they go, well, I don't really know what an AR-15 is. I don't know what a bump stock does. I don't know what really classifies an assault rifle as an assault rifle. In fact, I don't even know the gun laws in my state, but I have an opinion and I will vote. Why not just say, hey, I'm dumb. I'll stay out of this. Because there's plenty of people knowledgeable about firearms who have uh, good ideas on regulating firearms a little bit further. Here in Nevada, we don't track um, handguns anymore we used two years ago when i first got my ccw we used to track all handguns and then one day we stopped doing that a lot of gun people loved it i'm kind of on the fence i don't know if i agree with that but uh i'm pretty smart when it comes to the local gun laws and that's one particular issue where i feel like hey maybe we should uh regulate a little bit more but i'm saying that because i'm knowledgeable the majority of people that say regulate 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 the majority of those people, if you gave them a simple, a very simple test on guns, they would fail miserably. Speaking of guns, I have a great story of even more gun violence here <laughs> in uh, Las Vegas. So Andy Schrock is in town with a lot of the Revive and Force guys. So I took them to downtown Las Vegas, Fremont Street for a night of fun, grab a couple drinks, do some gambling. By the way, guys, I put in $2.00. I was waiting for my Budweiser. I was sitting at the bar. I put in $2 into a machine, and I was playing Keno. I hit a five spot, and I won fucking $200 on the spot. Now, this is coming from a guy that gambles 
probably like four days a week. I throw 20 bucks in the machine every time I go to the bar. But this particular time, I actually won. And Andy Schrock was looking directly at my machine. And he's like, what's going on right now? And I'm like, oh, I need this, this last number to hit. And it was like, do, 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 do. And I was like, yes, fuck yeah, dude. I'm the greatest Kino player of all time. KinoConfusion.net. For my one-time uh, seminars, you can only pay $19 a month to me. And I'll teach you how to play Kino. Um, so anyways, I parked in the same parking spot where I always park. And in my car was Cody Witt, Jason Park, and Jason's friend Braxton. That was my little crew. And we were going there to meet up with Andy, Brian, Alex Boyning, Sam Tabor, um, Steven Stees, Chris Chan, Sean Rodriguez, a bunch more people. I'm sure I left a couple people out. So we go over there. We have fun. Everyone gets pizza. I get a couple drinks. Get my pizza, do my gambling. Night's over, everyone's going home because we all got to skate the next day. So here's what I do. I walk back to my car, and there's yellow tape. There's two police cars. Now, seeing two police cars is not a big deal. There could be two police cars anywhere, all right? Plus, it's downtown Las Vegas. There's fights all the time. Two bums could have gotten a fight. I get a little closer, and I see that the street is taped off a little bit. It's not completely taped off. It's taped off so you can't drive through, but anyone can walk right through because I came from the side. So imagine a straight line of a street. Both ends have tape, but there's only two pieces of tape. So it's just two lines. It's like an equal sign. So if anyone wants to walk through the middle of the equal sign, they can. So I walk up, and I see the two police cars, and I say, uh, hey, what's up, dude? Um, you guys got this tape put up. Can you lift up the tape so I can go home? And the cop looks at me and he goes, what the fuck is your problem? And I'm like, whoa, dude, chill. What are you talking about? And he's like, are you fucking stupid? And I'm like, what is going on here? He's like, you didn't see the tape? There's tape all around here. And I was like, well, yeah, I saw the tape, but I walked. I just walked right up to you. I walked around your car and you didn't even notice me being here. I walked directly up to this police cruiser and you finally noticed me. And I said, hey, what's up, bud? Can you please move the tape? So it's not like... It's not like it was some big FBI fucking Pentagon crime scene with helicopters flying over. It looked like either a fender bender or maybe a, a bum fight. So I'm annoyed. And he's like, you didn't see the cone right there? And I'm like, the cone? And I look down and there's a cone. So I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe a fender bender. Maybe you guys are blocking off the street for construction. Maybe there's a gas leak. There's literally anything that could be wrong with this situation. I have no idea. There's no dead bodies. There's no fucking ambulance there's nothing and then he goes there's a fucking bullet shell right there you almost fucked up my entire investigation and i'm like dude fucking i'm like chill dude i didn't mean to fuck up your shit and uh all i need to do is get out of here and he was being a complete asshole dude and for somebody who previously wasn't paying attention he was probably just on instagram in the police cruiser like da -da 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 -da, waiting for um gun unit to show up so he just bitches at me. Finally uh, got in the car, drove away. He gave me this really mean look as I drove under, and life went on all good, whatever. Um, I was annoyed by that, right? <laughs> I don't know. I tried to look up the news today. It'd be great if I could have a news story to tell you guys what happened, but I could not find a news story for anything. I didn't see any dead bodies. I didn't see anything. I just saw two police cruisers. So maybe it had just happened. I don't know. But it is kind of interesting, right, that uh, – Someone may have been shot or shot at moments after I parked or maybe before I walked back to my car in downtown Las Vegas. I always tell you guys, Las Vegas is a crazy place, or at least it can be. And uh, I don't know. I immediately texted Cody Witt. I'm like, dude, you know that area where we parked? There was a shooting and the cop was an asshole. And then he hit me back like, if you need help, dude, I will come pick you up or whatever. Mulchie says, for some reason, I thought you used to be a police sergeant. No way. I used to be a security guard. I used to be an armed security guard. Because I had an arm. In fact, I had two arms. And I had two guns. And I also had a third gun that actually shot bullets. <laughs> um, Mulchie also says, is Andy a party animal? Nah, not so much. I don't know. Maybe he would be. But Andy always has so much going on. He always has so many like things going on. He's not out here for just a pleasurable fucking hanging out fun time he's out here to skate he's out here to you know do his business and shit he's out here to make sure that all the skaters that he brought out here that they stay focused and they land tricks i've never seen andy on like a relaxing vacation so who knows 
Maybe Andy is crazy, dude. Maybe he just goes out there, relaxing, vacation to Cuba, puts his feet up, does some fine Cuban cocaine, big-ass cigar, wears his <laughs> aviator shades. Who knows? But no, in Las Vegas, he's really chill. Which is crazy, because Las Vegas is, in my opinion, one of the funnest places of all time. Narl says, how's Koopa? Koopa is my seven-week-old puppy, and he's doing great. For now. I mean, we still have another, what, <laughs> 20 minutes to go on this podcast, and he hasn't gone crazy yet. Then again, I locked the door, so even if he does cry, I'll never hear his screams. Irie Caveman says, does Andy talk like a 10-year-old in real life? Um, I don't think he talks like a 10-year-old ever. I think you need to reevaluate 10-year-olds. And uh, I don't know what your problem is with Andy Schrock <laughs> to ask a question like that. But uh, I feel the exact same way, dude. I really can't stand people who really like skateboarding and then make a company with them and their friends and support their friends nonstop and uh, become successful and share their success with all of their fellow skateboarding friends. That just really pisses me off. I really hate people who, you know, like raise their kids really well and have a happy, friendly home and find success doing what they love. That just really gets under my fucking skin, dude. What a fucking sellout. What a pussy. <laughs> I, t I never understand the uh, Andy Shrock hate. So, you guys want to do trivia? Give me a hell yeah if you guys are ready for today's trivia question for your opportunity to win dun, 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 a brand new Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack. I always hold up one sticker when I show it to the camera, but you win more than one. Oftentimes, you win five plus whatever other random stickers I have. Usually, you might even get a revive sticker. Ooh, goosebumps. Ooh, a little boner happened right now. Um, today's trivia I always start the stream a little bit early. We don't include the pre-show in the Sunday episode, but I always get on stream early to make sure my audio levels are all good and shit, and we have a little conversation. We also do this after the show. After the show is over, I sit and hang out with you guys and talk a little bit more. It's just a little more informal. Or is it formal? What does formal mean? Anyone? Can somebody help me in a comment below? Jesus Christ. Okay, today's trivia question. This one should be an easy one. It's on the topic of fighting because we were talking about the UFC earlier. First one to answer wins the sticker pack. Here we go. What is the traditional belt order in Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Five belts. Go. I trained in jiu-jitsu for maybe a year and a half, plus minus some time. I don't know. I'm probably going to jump into the... Uh, Jump into the gym tomorrow morning, Saturday. Ooh, that'll be fun. I actually have a couple of trophies from Jiu-Jitsu where I fuck some dudes up. One guy fucking choked the shit out of him, and I think the other one I, I think the other one I forfeited. I think I forfeited because there was another guy I was gonna I was gonna fight in the finals, and I was like, ah, he was a little younger than me, and I was like, dude, just take it. He was part of my same uh, gym. Parker Benz says, white, blue, purple, brown, black, and you are the winner. I don't know how it took so long for you guys to get that. I feel like that's pretty common knowledge, although I think some of the other martial arts have different things. I dated a chick. I really hate chicks that like to brag about themselves. I dated a chick who always talked about how badass she was, and she could beat up any dude, and her dad was a cop, and she was in karate, and this and that, and I was like, oh, you're in karate, like, super hardcore? And I was like, do you have any, like, medals or trophies? And she's like, no, I didn't compete or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay, so, so you probably never really sparred or anything, and you're, you're not really in good shape? What, what is this karate shit you're talking about? And she's like, I was a yellow belt. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think yellow belt is one of, like, the first couple belts in jiu-jitsu, yellow belt means you're, like, under the age of, of 13. That means you're just a child, and it, it, it just means you're a kid. You just showed up. You showed up enough times. It doesn't mean you did anything. And I just can't stand chicks like that. She also liked to always brag about how she was the smartest person. She knew everything. She used to be a writer. What is it with chicks giving themselves props? By the way, Parker Benz is the winner. Please talk to me on Facebook. Send me a message. Unless you don't live in America. If you don't live in America, then uh, Ginger YouTube is the winner. Yellow is right after white. Okay, well, I had a friend who was really into kung fu too, and he also he also was one to always talk about himself. Obviously, I'm always going to talk about myself on in a podcast situation on YouTube because like I'm the subject. But 
If you're just in a conversation with somebody, especially if you're watching like the UFC and your friend who weighs 125 pounds goes, yeah, these guys aren't doing his kicks right. And you look at him and you're like, well, you did Kung Fu for six months and you're, you're going you're gonna to tell me that this guy's doing it wrong? Yeah, he doesn't know how to do his kicks right. He doesn't snap them right. And you're just looking at this guy like, what the fuck are you? Are you kidding me? This guy could, this guy could, but you could handcuff this guy with his hands behind his back and he would fuck you up. <laughs> oh, man. It's one of those things. I feel like some people, they feel like if they work hard at something, no matter what it is, if they work hard at something, they then have to brag about it. We see this with vegans, right? Turning vegan is kind of uncomfortable at first. You're like, oh, man, I got to avoid all this shit, man. And then you're like, man, that was, that was hard to do. I think I'm going to talk about this forever. CrossFit, oh, man, dude, I just did a whole bunch of burpees and hang cleans and fucking split jerk squats and shit. Man, I just did this for like two weeks. I can't wait to be on Facebook every single day and talk about how crazy CrossFit is and how everyone who doesn't do CrossFit isn't as cool as me, right? It's one of those things. Everyone likes to talk about themselves. I don't get it. Oh, man. It's one of those things, too. Like, don't talk about yourself. Be about yourself, right? The dude who I was talking about, like, hey, man, you're going to talk all this shit about uh, throwing the perfect kick? Why don't you go join an amateur fucking fight league? Go join the AMS. Go out there and do something. Maybe get a real trophy. Or the chick. Hey, you think you're super smart? Go fucking get a good job. Try that for once. Oh, you think you know everything about karate? Go get, uh, go get a good fucking... A job for a, for a karate teacher or or go compete with other fucking chicks and let's see if you're even good for a chick i don't know then again las vegas fight capital of the world i don't know maybe i'm crazy so i want to talk a little bit about steel reserve 211s in the chat i'm going to go ahead and spam this emote feel free to subscribe if you guys want a chance to use this emote on Twitch. Also, let me know your thought on people who, uh, your thought, your, your singular thought. Let me know your thoughts on uh, people that talk about themselves, especially in the context of CrossFit, in the context of martial arts, in the context of, hey, even vegans. You can let me know in the chat right now, and I'll read a few. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'd like to see your guys' thoughts in the YouTube comments when this video comes out on Sunday, 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 Grave Digger. Grave Digger. <laughs> Excuse me. So, 211 Steel Reserve, my favorite malt liquor since I was one year old. I feel like that's going to be my next tattoo. Speaking of 211s, I tried to drink a Four Loco Gold. I tried to drink a Four Loco Gold on stream the other day. And uh, I think it's like 14% alcohol. And I was like, dude. Not a big deal. You know, I drink fucking 211. Here's what I do. I drink half of a 211 flavored, and then I pour flavored vodka into it, and then I drink that, and that makes my 8% 211 go up to, I don't know, estimated 14%. I don't know the math. I'm just guessing. So I tried to drink the Four Local Gold, and here's the thing. Have you ever had a beer that got cold, and then got hot, and then got cold, and then got hot, and then got cold again, and then got room temperature, and then you try to drink it, and then you're like, oh, this tastes weird. It's like a really... You know it right away. You know right away when you've opened up a beer and you've drank it and you go, this is a suspicious beer. Well, that sort of happened with Four Loco. I drank the Four Loco gold, and it tasted like a Red Bull that had gotten cold, then gotten hot, then gotten cold, then gotten hot, then gotten cold, then gotten hot, then gotten digested, then gotten shit out of a human being, then got elbow dropped by a sweaty wrestler, then got regurgitated again, out of the wrestler, it, it absorbed into the wrestler's armpit, then he threw it up again, and then, uh, then he drank it, and then, then I drank it. It tasted gross! I had to dump it out! Never in my life have I had a, a beer that I had to just dump it out. Had to dump it out, it tasted so bad. How can anyone on earth drink that shit? I get it. It gets you fucked up. It gets you fucked up, bro. It gets you real fucked up. Yeah. No, of course it gets you fucked up because you're making this weird face Ugh, every time you drink it. How can a human being drink that garbage? This is coming from a guy that doesn't like, uh, I don't even like, uh, like nice IPAs. I don't like coffee beers. I don't like beers that are too dark because I'm racist. And, uh, 
I was like, yeah, I'm going to have this really flavored malt liquor. This is going to be great. Flavored with shit. They flavored it with garbage. What was I going to get at? Oh, next tattoo is going to be a 211 tattoo. Anyways, let me know your thoughts on Four Local Gold. Is there anyone who's watching this who can drink a Four Local Gold? Is that possible? <sighs> I don't get it. Not so cool, Ginger says. Anytime I bring up anything about martial arts, it turns into a pissing match. So I don't really talk about it with people. Yeah, I remember I got into an argument with a guy at a, <laughs> at a drug house, interestingly enough, many years ago. And I was watching uh, free fights on Spike or whatever. And somebody got choked out. <laughs> somebody got fucking choked out. And uh, the guy's like, man, this fighter's stupid, man. Why don't he just, he could just punch him behind his back. He must not know how to fight. And I'm just like, all right, dude, I forgot the dude's name. I think his name was Hammer. They called him Hammerhead. He was a fucking drug dealer. Called him Hammerhead. And uh, I was like, all right, dude, Hammer, how about I put you in the choke? And then we'll see how many times you can hit me. He's like, no, nah, motherfucker, you ain't doing that. And I was like, no, I'll put you in half the choke. I'll put one arm around you because this is when I was training a lot. I was like, Hammer, I'll put one arm around you and let's see if you can fight your way off using that technique. He's like, nah, motherfucker. And it's one of those things where it's just like, hey, let's, uh, let's put this guy to the test. And nobody, everyone wants to talk until they get put to the test. And that's one of those weird things, too. A lot of people who talk really loud about fighting, too, they end up backing down immediately. I've had it happen a million times, and I'm not necessarily a super intimidating guy, but I am very, like, uh, like confrontational. So if somebody does some shit, you know, says, oh, what the fuck's your problem, dude? I'm going to be like, you know, I'll start off saying, hey, listen, man, sorry I bumped into you, my bad. I don't want no problems. And they go, yeah, I know you don't want no problems. And it's usually like a two-strike rule. It's like, listen, but I, I backed down. I backed down. I completely backed down. You're the alpha male. Fucking you win. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, kn I know you don't want any trouble. Then I go, all right, motherfucker, let's do it. Let's fucking do it. You know, you get right in there. Fucking, let's fucking do it then. I didn't want any trouble at first, but I'm not going to let you punk me and bump into me. And then motherfuckers go, oh, no, no, it's cool. It's cool, dude. It's cool. And then I got to go above and beyond. No, it ain't cool. It ain't fucking cool. Thought you said I didn't want to do this. I got into an argument. This was actually on Thanksgiving. I got into a fight on Thanksgiving. Or maybe it was New Year's. It was, it was sometime around then with this guy named, uh, named Everett. I'm pretty sure it was his name. And uh, we were in the fucking house. We're all hanging out. I had my chick. I was dating a chick named Alexis at the time. And we're sitting there, they're all playing like Call of Duty Zombies, and we're having a debate about hip-hop, or I don't know what we're talking about. We're talking about something where me and him didn't agree, which is fine. We weren't fighting, we were arguing. I argue with Asian John all the fucking time. So we're arguing, and then he says, hey, bro, you just shut the fuck up, because when we get outside, I'm going to fuck you up. And I'm just like, listen, dude, we're just arguing, not a big deal. And he's like, yeah, you're going to quit fucking talking when we get out there. And I was just like, oh, you're going to fuck me up when we get out there? I was like, let's, let's get out there. Like, we're, we're about to leave. And the guy who owned the house, Nick, he was like, he saw, like, well, he saw what was about to happen. So Nick's like, he, he walks us out. He's, he's like, dude, I don't want you guys destroying my PS3. We're going to walk out there. We got out there. I was like, hey, motherfucker, you said you're going to fuck me up when we get outside. What the fuck happened? And he's like, no, nah, I wasn't even saying it like that. And I was like, no, you said you were going to fuck me up. When we got outside, now we're all outside. And my girlfriend's like, dude, don't, Devon, what are you doing, man? Don't fucking push the issue. And I'm like, no. He told me several times, he's going to fuck me up. Now we're out there. So I put my fucking glasses in my hat. I took my shirt off. <clears throat> and I kept walking up to him. And he was walking backwards. <clears throat> and uh, then I socked him. I, he was walking backwards. And I fucking ran up to him. And I hit him one time. I hit him one single time. And uh, he, he didn't get knocked out or anything. It wasn't a clean hit. I just fucking knocked him. And then he started saying, like, he started saying, like, dude, he, I was trying to take off my jacket and he hit me. And I'm like, no, nah, motherfucker, you, you didn't get hit taking off your jacket. You got hit running away. <clears throat> and then he started to come closer. And then uh, it became this big gay wrestling match. I don't, I don't know why some fights turn into a big gay wrestling match. You know, he kind of got on top of me but couldn't, but didn't punch. You know what I mean? And then it got broken up. And I was just like. And then he started crying. He was a grown fucking man. His grown man started crying. And I, you know, I'm all hyped and shit. I'm like, motherfucker, what? We got out here, motherfucker. Like, let's, let's throw some real punches, man. Quit that gay-ass wrestling shit. Which I'm also, I'm down to fight on the ground, too. But it was, it was nothing was happening. It was just, it was just, it was just a gay. He, 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 you know what? Maybe what I misunderstood in the house. He's like, hey, you better quit talking shit. Or I'm about to come out there and have a gay orgy. And I was like, oh, you about to have a gay orgy, motherfucker? Well, I'm going to keep talking shit. Let's go outside and get gay, motherfucker. Show me your dick, Everett. Where your dick at? Where your dick at? Where your dick at? Las Vegas, motherfucker. 702, motherfucker. What? Show your dick, motherfucker. 
what? But maybe I got mis- maybe I misunderstood and thought it was an actual fight. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. I guess. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, the grown man. He, he literally cried. It was it was ridiculous. I get it though. Some people get really hyped up after a fight and they do cry. I've seen people cry after winning a fight, which is awkward. But um, it's really happened. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, why? How do we start talking about that? Why are we talking about that? Oh, the MMA shit. Yeah. Uh, people are just motherfuckers. Everyone want to bark and bark and bark and bark until they fucking get pressed to bite, and it's like meow. Oh no! Then they turn into a meow. Meow. So I think my next tattoo is gonna be a two eleven tattoo. And uh, the last tattoo I got was a calf tattoo, and it's really small. And it was the easiest tattoo I've ever gotten. All the tattoos I have, like they're like huge, like six, seven, eight hour tattoos. My back is like twenty hours tattoo. You know, I can usually sit for like five or six hours, and then I'm like, oh, this is really. Hurting my life. I don't like this shit. So, uh... <laughs> um... I got this little tattoo. So now I'm kind of down to get little tattoos. I'm trying to get little, like, one or two hour bangers. And I'm gonna get a still reserve tattoo. But what I wanted to talk about is whenever I bring up tattoos, a lot of people, uh... Tattoo artists must have to deal with this all the time. This is an interesting topic. Um... When you say you have a tattoo or you have a tattoo or you mentioned a tattoo, someone else always has to – hey, dude, we're about to come full circle. Someone else always has to tell you about their cool tattoo idea that they're never going to get. And they always go into – like they can't just go into a detail like, yeah, I'm going to get a horse on my arm. I'm going to get a horse tattoo on my arm because uh, my family was cowboys. No, it's always like, dude, I'm going to get this horse. I'm going to get this guy from Bakersfield to do it. Because he's really good at black and gray. He also does really good skulls. And I'm going to get him to do it. But I'm going to have the sun. The sun's going to be on the left, dude. And then there's going to be, like, water. Because it's going to be on a beach. But traditionally, this horse isn't on the beach. But it's going to be like a beach. But then on the right side, there's going to be a rope and a horseshoe, which symbolizes luck. And it symbolizes, uh, you know, like, new beginnings. And then underneath and behind the horse is going to be a, a skull... A, a skull outline of of a porcupine's skull because I once had a horse that was stung by a porcupine and then it's going to cover it's going to come around into my elbow and that's where the rope is going to loop because my great uncle he was uh he was number one wrangler in in Arizona and then at, at the end of the loop it's going to be then I mean that's going to be the first tattoo and then it's going to connect and then when I get around to doing the more, the rest of my shit and the it, Ten minutes into the conversation, you're like, hey, dude, you can't even fucking pay your rent. There's no way you're going to get a, there's no way you're going to get five grand worth of tattoos ever. I don't want to hear about this shit anymore. And I feel like that always becomes uh, a fucking conversation. You know, people ask me, like, what's your next tattoo going to be? And I was like, I don't know, 211. Like, oh, OK, the end, whatever. And then now it's like, oh, I got all these tattoos that I like. Neat. And, uh. My shit is now I'm going to go tell Clean. I'm going to tell Dave and Clean. I'm like, all right, just uh, hit me from my knee to my ankle. Do whatever you want. Uh, you know the shit I'm into. I like fucking skating, I guess. But I don't. I already have enough skating shit. Dude, just do some bullshit. Just do whatever you think is cool. Get to work. Give me a piece of art. Surprise me. You know? But it's always like... I know people like to talk about themselves, and I do it all the time, too. You know? Obviously, on this podcast, all I'm doing is talking about my life and my experiences, but I try to be a little bit interactive with you guys, too. Um, I just don't like to deal with that shit. <laughs> and I'm as as forward as I am and as, as like, uh, I don't know, as rude as I can be, I don't like to interrupt people when they're trying to talk about something that they're somewhat passionate about. I, it, I find it, like, really rude to do that. So I will literally sit there, okay, I'll be a little timid bitch, and I'll sit there, and I'll listen to all these retarded fucking details about this fanciful tattoo that you'll never pay for. Like, oh, yep, oh, yeah, and, and then, oh, oh, yeah, oh, okay, oh, and, and you're going to get the rope, though, right? Oh, and then, and then the rope's going to go, oh, and then you now the forearm, too. Oh, okay, and then you're going to get that around the, the side, and then, oh, and then the knuckles. Oh, okay, and then what, after the knuckles. Oh, and then you're going to go all the way to oh, a full body piece. Okay, alt American tradition. Okay. And then, oh, but the left side is going to be Chinese. And then, okay, and you're going to get, okay, and you're going to get that script across both. And then your leg to, and then your, what, what, at your asshole? You're going to, what, Samoan traditional fucking tribal on your bottle? What? Wait, uh, wait a minute. You just described $20,000 in tattoos. And 
and you can't afford four hundred dollars a month of rent. Get the fuck out of here. I don't care about your stupid ass tattoo. You're gonna have to find a guy out there who's like, hey, yeah, dude, I do uh, I do amazing tattoos. I do great portraits. I do great color. I do great uh, American traditional. I can do fucking realism. I can do fucking animals. I can do it all. You know what? And I charge a nickel. I charge a nickel an hour. I, I've been looking for a client like you because you want twenty thousand dollars worth of tattoos, but you only want to pay forty dollars. That that's perfect. That's that's exactly what I want. I'm a tattoo artist. I what I want to do is be broke. I want to. Can we just switch places with you? Can can I give you a ton of tattoos and then I become broke? Because that's my goal as a tattoo artist. What do you? I don't understand. Frosty Bevs, what made you want to get the misled youth tattoo? That was my very first skate video ever. And I think it's just a funny name. I actually have it. I have it within arm's length. So if you guys want to test me, if you guys think I'm lying, feast your fucking eyes on this. A lot of you guys don't know what this is. This is, uh, this is what we used to watch before YouTube and, uh, and, and torrent and uh, fucking virtual reality. We had this. We had these things. And look, this is just the case. What's inside it? Now this is where the money is. This actually... Believe it or not, this, we called it a VHS. And what we would do is we would insert this into a machine that looked somewhat like a microwave. If you guys know what microwaves are, it, would, it looked somewhat like a microwave. And it would, it would actually mechanically ingest this tape. And then it would play a skateboard video, which is... I know I'm blowing your guys' minds. I know I'm blowing your guys' minds right now. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible that, the <laughs> yeah, the technology we had back then far surpassed what we have now. But yeah, it was my, uh, <laughs> it was my very first skate video. It meant a lot to me. I watched it thousands and thousands of times. So, <laughs> Mulchy YouTube says we're not all fucking 16, Steve. We know what a fucking video cassette tape is. I'm glad you got the sarcasm because I feel like you might have the, uh, you might have the comedic sense of a 16-year-old if, if you didn't understand how sarcastic I was being right there. <laughs> Very old reality said I might get a Bones Brigade. Bones Brigade tattoo at some point. Nice. Yeah, I'm really into skateboarding. I had a bunch of skateboard tattoos. I mean, there's not a whole lot of things I'm super passionate about. And at this point, I have a tattoo that represents everything I'm passionate about, I guess. So what the fuck am I going to do now? By the way, guys, Doug Desatels is in the chat. He's also in Las Vegas right now. Ooh. He also streams Call of Duty. So if you guys plan on hanging out on Twitch more often, I would, uh, I would give Doug a follow. And I would do it now. I would do it immediately. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, I would suggest checking out one of Doug's many channels on the YouTube platform. Anyways, guys, that is going to be it for... Today, we are going to do a post show, so if you want to hang out and chat a little more one-on-one -on -one privately, stick around. Other than that, I want to thank you guys for hanging out. I can't do a podcast without you guys listening. Otherwise, it would just be a, me talking by myself. That'd be the lamest shit ever. Although, I don't know if everyone does this. I talk to myself all the time in my house alone, specifically when I'm cooking. I just say what I'm about to do. I'm like, oh, and then I have to go get the pepper, and then I'll walk to the pepper, put the pepper on the pasta, and I'll walk to the fridge. I'm like, oh, shit, I need, uh, I need more fucking cream. Ah, where's the cream at? Where's the cayenne pepper? And I talk to my fucking self like a goddamn psychopath. Does everyone do that, or is it just me? Well, if you're walking live and if you may have shown up late today, you can watch the entire podcast on YouTube. It uploads on Sunday morning. Twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle Fridays around 4 p.m. to catch this broadcast live. And uh, again, let me know what, uh, what questions did I ask you guys today. Did I ask you guys about guns? Let me know your thoughts on guns or whatever. Let me know your thoughts on Four Locos if there's anyone who can possibly fucking drink that. And again, let me know your thoughts on people who talk about themselves too much. Because, hey, maybe I'm, maybe I don't understand. I used to ha I used to know people like dudes, and that would be how they tried to get chicks. And amazingly, sometimes it would work. In high school, dudes would just make up bullshit stories about themselves, and chicks would buy it. And now, later in life, I think the older chicks get, they kind of have, like, that sixth sense. Like, they can always tell when someone's bullshitting. But back then, I feel like they weren't able to do that. So, uh... 
So I don't know, maybe talking about yourself, maybe it's like a positive reinforcement thing. Maybe that's what makes all these vegans and shit. Maybe one day they started talking about themselves and they got some pussy and now they all just became vegans. I don't know. Anyways, that is going to be it for today. I appreciate you guys hanging out. I, again, can't do this without you. Congratulations to the Sticker Pack winner. Tune in next Friday for another live podcast. Thank you guys for the topics. And uh, let's go ahead and play that outro, god damn it.